yourself an Apple Watch Ultra 2 or a Series 9 Apple Watch and you're looking for the first things to do, well, you're in the right place. And the absolute first thing you should know how to do is how to choose the perfect watch face for you. So let's get started because time is of the essence. Now, for most of these tips, it's gonna be much easier to follow if you do it on your phone and not on the watch. And the first thing you should really do is go to your apps library here, search for the watch app. And temporarily place it onto one of your home screens. Now, once you load up the watch app, you'll see all your currently installed watch faces here at the top. If you hit edit, you can remove the ones you don't like. I'm just gonna remove all of these and start with a fresh canvas so you guys can see how this works. At the bottom of this app, you'll see face gallery. Here you have all of the official Apple watch faces and you can get unofficial watch faces as well. And there are thousands of them. So you don't have to be restricted to these. And if you stick around, I recommend an app that allows you to do that. So my advice to you when choosing the perfect watch face is to have one for business, one for leisure and one for fitness tracking. Of course, you can have as many as you want, but do at least three. So for me, I'm gonna add the modular ultra. I also really like the new solar analog clock. So that's gonna be my leisure clock. I'm gonna hit add here at the top. And for business, you could either go with the chronograph pro or the regular chronograph, or even the California style if you like. And if you want a truly personalized watch face, you could go with your Memoji, or you could go with the portrait option because it automatically brings the subject of the photo forward in the image so the clock kind of sits a little bit behind it and it blurs the background and it does look awesome. Also another really useful watch face is actually the Siri watch face. As it gives you tons of quick access to a lot of useful information right there on the watch face in a kind of stack format. Now staying on the watch face topic, let me show you how to personalize the watch faces that you've chosen so that they provide quick access to the features you use the most on the watch. To do this, go back to your home screen on your Apple Watch app, choose the watch face you want to customize. Here we can change the color. We can also change the style of the clock. I personally like the big numbers on the clock. And if you scroll down, you'll see night mode. The reason there's a red one here is because red doesn't affect your circadian rhythm as much as blue light. But what I really wanna show you here is the complications. So you can customize these little bits of information and shortcuts around the outside of the screen. So in the top left corner, I have the temperature. And if I tap temperature, it opens the weather app. At the top center, I've got the spirit level, and this also acts as a compass as well. So that little cross there, when you line it up perfectly with your wrist, you'll see where north, east, south, and west are. Top right corner, last view waypoint. I'm not really using waypoints right now because I don't go exploring that much. I tend to know where I am most of the time. So I could change this to something else like camera remote, calculator, or audio books, or alarms, which is something I use all the time. Bottom left corner, we've got the activity ring. So that's a quick glance at how you're doing for the day. And again, all of these shortcuts straight into the app on the watch. Something that I use all the time is the wallet and you can double tap the side button here to open the wallet. But if you do this, you can do it with one tap without having to push the button on the side twice. And at the bottom, I have sunrise and sunset time. Now this watch face is completely customized for how I want to use it on a daily basis. So I recommend you do the same. Now this next tip might not be for everybody, but I'm gonna show you how to do it because you can do it. And I do think some of you might like it. So check this out. Go back into your Apple Watch app, scroll down to where it says clock. Here, scroll down until you see monogram. And right here, you can type your own initials or even your full name if it's short enough. Now, when you go back, if you set up the color watch face, which I already have set up here and you might have caught a glimpse of it in the intro, add it to the watch. Now go to the color clock face here at the top, customize it however you want, scroll down and you'll see this option, monogram. You can turn this off and you can turn this on whenever you want. And there we go. Now it's got your name on it. This is specific to certain watch faces. As far as I can tell right now, it's only this one that works, but there might be others. Test it out, see if you can find the settings within your favorite watch face. Okay, this next tip is a new feature that comes with the new Wear OS. 
when you swipe up from the bottom, you now get your smart stacks. And you can see here, it's just the default setup right now. Now, what I recommend you do here is customize your smart stack, personalize it for yourself and what you're interested in. For example, I do not give a shit about Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson. So to change this, hold your finger down on one of the stacks and you can remove the things you don't want by hitting the little minus. You'll also notice a little yellow pin icon to the right of some of these. So you can pin your favorite ones to the top so they never change position in the stack. And if you want to add new widgets to the stack, hit the plus. For example, this is pretty cool, compass. Sunset, activity, alarms. There's so much stuff here you can add. Just choose the ones that you feel are the most useful. Okay, this next one is a trick that not many people know about and now you're not gonna be one of those people. If you go into the watch, push the side button, bring up all of your apps, scroll down to your settings, scroll down to accessibility, scroll down again, and you'll see this, control nearby devices, tap that. This will scan for nearby devices that are connected to your Apple ID. Now check this out. These are controls for the home screen of your phone. That one in the center is your backgrounding. The one in the left hand side is the old style Apple home button. Some of you might remember that. Here we've got our notifications. Bottom left opens our quick settings, our control panel, Siri. And if you hit the three dots here, you get even more controls. So it shows you what the buttons are in case you didn't know and you need a reminder. You've got play, pause, skip tracks, and you do have the option for hand gestures. Now this is something Apple talked about in their keynote, but it's not something that's very obvious to enable. I'm sure they're gonna streamline this in the future, but I'm gonna show you guys a little later on the video how you can use them right away today. Okay, so you just learned how to control your phone from your watch, but did you know you can actually control the watch from the phone and this one's a little bit trickier to find. And again, not many people know about this. Check this one out. Go to the settings on your phone, not the watch settings this time. Scroll down to where you see accessibility. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see Apple Watch mirroring. Tap that, enable this. And what you'll get here is your Apple Watch face on your phone. And you can navigate it exactly the same way you would if you were touching the screen here. If you tap the side where the buttons are, it will activate the buttons as well. And you can even use the crown to scroll on the screen. Now you might be thinking, why would I wanna use this? And that is certainly a good question. <laughs> the only reason I could see to do this is if you can't be bothered to find your watch and you wanna check some of the stats on it or start a timer or something like that, or if you happen to have an Apple Watch with a broken screen, you still might be able to access some of the information on it with this. And let me know in the comments if you've got any other good use cases for this particular feature. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. So there's a lot of advantages that you get with an Apple Watch, but one of the disadvantages with all smartwatches in general is the fact that you can be way more distracted because you'll actually feel when the notifications are coming through. And this can certainly slow you down when you're trying to be productive. So this is something I recommend you do straight away, day one. Go to the Apple Watch app, go to the notifications here, right at the top, scroll down, and you'll see all of the apps that can send you notifications. By default, pretty much all of these will be switched on. So definitely spend a bit of time, go through these, switch off everything that's not important to you. Do it once, do it right, and then you never have to do it again, unless you installed a new app. In which case you might wanna come back to this setting and turn off notifications for that app as well. So one of the most underutilized features on the Apple Watch is having a custom watch face for focus modes. To set this up, all you need to do is go to your control center here, go to the focus button here, hold it down. At the bottom here, hit new focus, create a focus mode for whatever it is you're doing. For me, I'm gonna call this one YouTube. I'm gonna color it red. I'm gonna change the icon to this monitor screen here. Hit next. Customize your focus mode for whatever it is you're trying to achieve when you're in the focus mode. But what I want you guys to focus on right now is this, the ability to customize a watch face for this particular 
mode. And what I suggest you do is actually have a watch face which is quite plain. And as you can see right now, all of mine are quite busy watch faces. So I'm gonna go back to the watch app, go to the face gallery. I'm gonna scroll down till I see this one, numerals, which is a very plain looking watch face. Tap that, set it as a dark color, very minimal stuff on the display right now. We could even get rid of the rings there as well. So we literally just have the time. Now, when we go back to the focus mode, we can set that as our preferred watch face when we're in the YouTube focus mode. Now, when we toggle on and off the focus mode, it will change the watch face as well. And you'll even get the little icon you've chosen at the top here. So it indicates what focus mode you're in. Okay, this is an important first thing to do. And again, do it once, do it right. You don't have to do it again until you install another app that you might need to have top of mind. Check this out, go to your Apple Watch app, go to app view here, choose whatever view you prefer. I do like the grid view on the Apple Watch, but here, what you wanna do is click arrangement. Here you have your app view with all the apps on your phone. And what you wanna do here is arrange this so that the things you use the most are at the top. So if you spend a little bit of time sorting this out, it will save you time in the future. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. So I recommend you do it now. Okay, so this next tip is specific to the Apple Watch Ultra and the action button on the side of the Apple Watch Ultra. If you have the Series 9 regular edition, feel free to skip to the next tip using the timestamps. So check this out within the Apple Watch app. If you go to the action button here, you can configure this to do a few of the Apple presets. And some of these might be very useful to some of you guys, but you can get way more advanced with this. But let me just show you how I have it set up right now. So a single tap on the action button goes to workout and it opens up the outdoor walk for when I'm walking the dog. So all of that can happen with one click of that button. But let's say you're more of a fitness enthusiast and you like to use apps like Strava or Nike Run or any third party fitness tracking app. Did you know you can map that button to open that app? And just to make sure that this will work seamlessly for you, you do wanna check that that app is already installed on the watch. And a quick way to do this is to swipe all the way to the bottom of the home screen on your Apple Watch app. And if you see it here with the install next to it, just tap install and that will install it here on the watch. Now, the next thing you wanna do is use your app library to search for the shortcut app, which looks like this, and then pin it to your home screen, which I've already done here. Now, when you open the shortcut app, you'll see a little plus in the top right corner, hit the plus there. And now this step is very important. See the little eye at the bottom here, tap that. And just know if you don't do this, it will not work and it will not appear on the watch. Enable this switch here, show on Apple Watch. Now hit done and then tap open app. And at the top here where it says open app, tap that there and choose the app that you want it to open. So I'm gonna type in Strava for this example. And where it says open app at the top, we want to rename this to be something more specific to what we're actually doing. So I'm gonna name it Strava on watch and hit done, and then hit done again at the top. That shortcut is now created and available on the Apple Watch. Now we wanna go back to the Apple Watch app, go back to the action button here, and instead of workout at the top, we're gonna to change this to shortcut, and we're gonna choose from the list Strava on watch. And you can see right now, there are basically only two options available for the shortcuts that are pre-installed by Apple. So you can create a few different ones of these and switch between them whenever you want. And you can actually get really creative with this and do way more stuff in one click. But I'll let you guys play with that and figure that out on your own. So now we set it up in Strava and watch. When I hit the button here on the side, you'll see the shortcut starts. It opens Strava here on the watch. And then we can access all of the data automatically from your Apple watch here on the phone within the Strava app as well. And thank me later for that one. Okay, so this is one of the features that I feel a lot of people probably don't know about and could actually be a lifesaver. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. It is the Apple Compass and you'll be surprised at how advanced and how useful this actually is. So you can find it here within your app screen or if like me, you've set it up as one of the complications on the watch face, you can tap it here as well. Now, check this out. You have your default compass like this, but if you use the crown, you can actually change how it looks. And check this out, you can zoom all the way out like this. 
And the reason this is really useful is you can actually create waypoints here by hitting the little icon in the bottom left corner. And it puts a little marker on the screen where that waypoint is. So as you walk, you can add a bunch of these waypoints and use the compass to navigate back to those exact waypoints. You also have the backtrack feature here, so you can start that and that will do it automatically for you. And if you scroll the other way, you'll see you can go all the way out to a compass that's just as simple as an arrow telling you which way to go. And where you have the eye icon up here, if you tap that, you get tons of information about your elevation, your actual coordinates on the planet, and it will list out all of your waypoints there as well. And you can even set a target alert. It really is a powerful tool if you're into exploring and generally just going on adventures. And it could even be useful for finding your car in a car park. So ask yourself a question. Do you want all compatible apps on your phone to automatically exist here on the watch? If you're quite conscious of the storage on your watch, I recommend that you do this. Go to your Apple Watch app on your phone, go to general, and at the top here, you'll see automatic app installs. I do believe this is on by default most of the time. And if it is, you might wanna switch it off. Now, what I prefer to do is leave it off and instead of letting it do it automatically, I can scroll all the way to the bottom of the home screen here and choose the apps that I want to install on the watch. That way I don't use up all the storage and also it avoids a lot of problems with notifications and all this kind of stuff distracting you when you don't need distractions. So think about whether this is important to you or not. Now here's another useful feature that you might want to take a look at. If you go into the phone app once again, go to general once again, scroll down, go to auto launch. And here is a switch that allows the watch to auto launch controls for audio apps on your phone. And this also applies for YouTube videos as well. I find this particularly useful when I'm streaming content from my phone to the TV or even just playing it on the phone and the phone is a little bit away from me, I have the controls available here on the watch. Okay, so this next one is a power saving tip. It's entirely up to you whether you would like to use it or not, but just know it will save you some battery. Go back into the Apple Watch app, go back to general and scroll down until you find this background app refresh. So this essentially will update these apps frequently in the background. And this uses some processing power on the watch. And of course that will burn some power. So if you go through this list, figure out which apps don't need to be refreshed, like Audible, for example, audio books don't need that. Figure out which ones you would like to be refreshed here on the app and which ones you absolutely don't need to refresh on the watch. And when you do this, you'll save a little bit of power and improve the performance a little bit on the watch because it would be downloading and updating less data than it would if you left them all on. If you're a competitive person or you just wanna keep track of the progress you're making or you wanna have a record of when you beat your personal best, I think you're gonna like this tip. Go to general, scroll down and enable screenshots. Now, whenever you have a new record on your watch, you can just hit the crown and the side key at the same time and that takes a screenshot and it will save it to your photos on your phone. And now you can share this with whoever you want via whatever messaging service you like. And once again, on the Apple Watch app on the phone, we're gonna to go to general. This one is gonna be useful if you like third party apps and you want the data to stay on screen for longer because by default, the screen will switch back to the clock after a certain amount of time. So go to this setting here, go to return to clock. Here you can customize the time between two minutes and an hour. And you can get a bit more specific as well per app. So we're gonna to go to Strava, for example. Here we can change this to a custom amount of time that we want it to stay on for. Once again, we can go always two minutes or one hour. So this next tip is for those of you that don't mind sacrificing a little bit of power for a little bit of style. Once again, on the Apple Watch app, Scroll down. This time we're going to display and brightness. Now, if you're not worried about battery, which you don't have to be so much here with the Ultra Watch because it does have a bigger battery, you can enable the always on display. And you can customize what's on the always on display. And you can switch off certain apps as well. And you can control the notifications. You can change the text size for the always on display and you can make the always on 
bold. And just to show you how this looks, I'm gonna wait for it to time out. And just keep in mind, if you wanna be real flashy with your Apple Watch, you could max out the brightness. This one here, the Ultra, is actually the brightest screen on any Apple product ever. So you could max it out if you don't mind using the power. And if you wanna save a little bit of power, you could enable this wake on crown rotations. The wake on crown rotation only works when you have always on off. And it is a cool feature and it's something I prefer to use instead of always on. So when the screen is off like that, you can dial the crown like this to turn it up. You can dial it back to turn it down. Now, if you watch the Apple Watch keynote, they did kind of make a big deal about the assisted touch functionality, but they haven't really made it that accessible yet. And I think they're still fine tuning it. But if you want to test it out now, I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So within the Apple Watch app, if you scroll down to accessibility and you scroll down again, you'll see assistive touch here. And if you enable this, this activates the hand gestures so you can navigate the watch by clenching your fist or pinching your fingers. And it does work, but it is a little bit tricky to do. So if you go to hand gestures, you'll see what you can and can't do with assisted touch at this point in time. Watch faces with a lot of complications is ideal for this. So by default, the activation for this is a double clench. And you see a little circle around the top left complication. The gestures, you can check them out here on the screen. So a pinch to move forward. And you can see we're toggling through the complications here. A double pinch to go backwards and it goes back. And then we can tap with just a single clench. It does work, it takes a bit of getting used to. It really was designed for people who don't have good functionality of their hands. This is something that Apple are working on because these kind of gestures are the kind of things you're gonna to need to know when you start using Vision Pro if you do decide to shell out the three or four grand or whatever it is they're asking for that. So they do want people to get familiar with these kind of things. It does work, so test it out. Let me know how you get on with it. Now this is another quick tip, even if you're not a big fan of Siri. It is very useful on the Apple Watch because it's familiar with all of the Apple Watch's functionality. So it's important you know how to access it very quickly. Just hold the crown in, hold it down, and you can ask Siri to pretty much do anything on the Apple Watch. For example, opening uh, a sports app or something like that. Open Strava. Also, this is great for setting timers or finding your phone. Okay, here's another little trick, and I actually really like this one, and maybe you will too, or maybe you won't, but let me show you anyway. In the Apple Watch app, scroll down to sounds and haptics, and here I have crown haptics switched on. So when I dial up and down, I actually feel a little bit of a vibration here on the watch. It just makes it feel a little more mechanical, a bit more responsive, and I like it. And you can also change the strength of the haptics as well. It's just right in my opinion, but you can make it more prominent if you want to. And you can also enable system haptics as well. It's one of those things you just have to try out and see if you like it or not. If you don't come back here, switch it off. And I do like having the cover to mute on. So, so if an annoying alarm goes off on the watch, you can literally just put your hand over it and mute that sound. This is a health and safety focus tip. If you're a bit older or you've bought a watch for someone who's a bit older and you wanna make sure they're all right and if they fall down, you need to know about it, this is a great setting that you should switch on straight away. Scroll down, go to emergency SOS. Here, you want to enable fall detection and you can set it to always on. So if this watch is gonna be for someone who's quite elderly and prone to falling down, you probably want to switch that on and just make sure you fill out all of the contact information at the bottom of this page so that it will alert the right person if something should happen. And here's another really important setting that you want to look at if you're setting this watch up for someone who might have heart problems or you're concerned about their health or even if you're concerned about your own heart health, check this out. Scroll down on the home screen of the app, go to the heart icon here and here you'll notice the cardio fitness notifications are already on, but what you can actually do here is turn off the AFib history. And when you do this, you can turn on irregular rhythm detection. So if something's not quite right, 
within a certain range that you set here, 120 to 40, it will alert you straight away to let you know something's not right with your heart. So have a think about this one and if it will be important for you or whoever you're setting the watch up for. Okay, that's enough doom and gloom. Let me show you a fun one to play around with. You can enable this and leave it on all the time and just use it when you want to. So if you scroll down on the watch app to where it says clock, and here you'll see this tap tick time. If you enable this, you have the option to get the watch to read out the time to you using words and it will read it out in digits. Or you could go terse where it will vibrate in a pattern to tell you what time it is. And you can even go Morse code so that it will vibrate and use Morse code to tell you the time. And when you want to use this, all you need to do is hold two fingers down on the display and it will begin. Now to truly be a master Jedi, you need to be using the mindfulness app and practice mindfulness every day. And this is a brand new feature to, to Apple's Wear OS. Essentially, it will take you through breathing exercises. It will prompt you to log how you're feeling at any particular time of the day and why you're feeling that way. And this will all be loaded onto the mindfulness app on your phone. And there, you'll be able to see a clearer picture of why your day is going so badly or why it's going so good. And my day will certainly be going better if you subscribe to the channel. Anyway, next tip. So remember how I said I'll show you guys how to get thousands of different watch faces on your Apple Watch. It is using a third party app and a good way to search and install apps on the watch is to actually use the Apple Watch app. Go to the discover page here. And if you scroll down, you'll see explore watch apps. If you browse on the actual app store, you're gonna get all of the phone apps as well. So this is probably one of the best ways to do it. Go to explore apps here. This takes you to the apps for the watch section. And you can see the popular ones, the essential ones, and there are tons of watch face apps to choose from. But the one that I think is probably the best is called Facer. And as you can see, Facer has so many different watch faces here to choose from, including some iconic retro game style watch faces. For example, these Atari ones. And there are premium watch faces available, but they also give you the top chart for the free watch faces as well. So definitely play around with this if you're really into customization of your Apple Watch. I hope you guys got some value out of this one. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I will see you in the next one for some more Apple tips and tricks.